Hi all, Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom. I have an eight year old, a five year old, and an infant. Today I wanted to share with you my most frequently used reference books. So let's get into it. So my most frequently used reference books are probably this entire explanatorium series. So I'll show you the explanatorium of history first. We pull this out every week and look at pictures. We do history quests, which the text just has a few black and white pictures. So I use the pictures in this to supplement the pictures that we're looking at in there. And it has a good amount of information. And it was the least like whitewashed Eurocentric um, history encyclopedia I could find. It's not, you know, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot better than any of the ones, other ones that I looked at. I think I talked about this in my history quest video, but it, this one also goes all the way up to COVID, which is interesting. My daughter obviously remembers COVID times, but I'm not sure my son will when he's older. And then the explanatorium of science, also excellent. It has really detailed pictures. A lot of DK books sometimes I feel are overwhelming with the how much they break up the information. This one I feel like is more manageable because it has a chunk of text here and it does have some bits of information, but I just feel like this, this book flows better than like those eyewitness books where it's so, you're jumping around so much that it just, I find them those visually overwhelming. I think this is a lot better. And the explanations in this are really solid. The explanation of Ublek in here is like the simplest, clearest explanation I think I've seen anywhere. The pictures are really good. We pull this out. We don't pull this out for every science lesson, but we pull this out a lot if there's something in here that's related to our science lesson. We use Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding, which also doesn't have pictures in the text since the text is written to the teacher. So we use the visuals in this a lot. The last explanatorium book is this nature book, which we also pull out a lot for science if we're doing something that's related to nature. This one also has amazing pictures, like just amazing close-up pictures and really good explanations of things. And this is a really good supplement to all of our science and nature studies. I, I liked these explanatorium books just way better than any other science or nature encyclopedias that I looked at. They're not you know, exhaustively comprehensive, but they cover everything that we've needed to cover so far in science and history. This next one is an art reference book, and we also pull this one out for history mostly. This one's set up like you're going on a museum trip. And so each of the pages is a gallery, and then this is the gallery map or the table of contents. So that's fun. This one I felt like was the least um, Eurocentric art book that I could find. It seemed fairly diverse in terms of, it's not perfect again, but it seemed fairly diverse in terms of parts of the world it covered, the number of women it covers, how it talks about the different kinds of art. And this is written to like an upper elementary student. So my kids can, not my son, but my daughter can read this to herself if she's interested. So we really like this. We pull this out and look at art. Um, when we're talking about, we usually use the encyclopedia on day one of History Quest, and then we look at the art on day two, the History Hop day. But it just kind of depends. And then the last two reference books that I really like, this one we have used kind of intermittently. I showed my daughter how to use it. I don't know that she's pulled it out to use on her own, but this is an illustrated thesaurus. And so it has a decent number of words. A lot of children's thesauruses I looked at were either like as uninviting as an adult thesaurus or had so few words that they weren't particularly useful. And I feel like this one hits the sweet spot between having these fun little pictures that illustrate different words to having a decent, pretty, pretty good number of words that it has um, synonyms for. So we really like this thesaurus. My daughter has used it. I don't think she's used it on her own a bit, but every time that I pulled it out to use with her, she thought it was interesting. So that's good. And then this children's dictionary, again, hit the sweet spot for us in terms of number of words it has and the information it has and the number of pictures. Um, Cause like some children's dictionaries had so few words that it was kind of pointless. It didn't have anything that my daughter would want to look up. Um, or they have, they're just so similar to an adult dictionary that you might as well just use the college dictionary that I, that I have. So this has word histories in it. It has different pictures. It has, um, other little like head scratchers that are kind of just funny things about English. It has synonyms in different spots. So I just thought that this was a really good kind of beginning dictionary that's a little bit more approachable than our 
Collegiate Dictionary, and it talks about word roots in different spots as well. You can see, I don't know if you can see here actually, but each of the letters has a different color, so it's very easy to find what you're looking for, and they have them here on the edge as well, if your child hasn't memorized the alphabet yet. Um, I mean, I still have to sing the song when I'm going through the dictionary, the ABC song. Yeah, so again, my daughter hasn't pulled this out to use on her own yet, but when I've pulled it out to use it for lessons, it's been a success. So we really like this Merriam-Webster's Elementary Dictionary as well. So those are our most used reference books. I hope you found that helpful. I will link everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on a link and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.